Hey guys, what's up? Brian here, and today I want to show you how I 3D model props for cosplay so you can make some cool stuff for yourself. Layout of kind of what I want to do today is show you all of the basic tools that you need to make things, and then I'm going to go through using those exact same tools, using nothing else that I haven't shown you except for one trick at the very end, how I would go and model a prop. So, without further ado, let's hop into Fusion 360 and get this started. Now, if you haven't downloaded Fusion 360 yet, just Google it, um, follow their prompts online to download the program, and then just pick the personal, not for commercial use license option. So let's hop into the program and see what we got to work with. So we're here in Fusion 360. I've got just a blank project open right now, and I'm gonna just teach you just the basics from the very beginning. So the first thing we want to do is we're gonna try to we're gonna create a sketch so that we can draw out our, our blueprint and get things to work. So we're just gonna come up to here, hit this create sketch button, click on that, and now we get to choose where we wanna put it. Do we wanna put it on the floor or on one of these two walls? I normally start with it on the floor. It's just kind of the way my brain works. So we're just gonna click down here and then you'll see it'll snap your camera there. First thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a line. So you can see on the top bar here, you have all of your options and everything. This one right here is our line. And if I mouse over it, you can see that the hotkey there is L. So I'm actually just gonna hit the button L, draw a line out. And you can see it gives me a distance and an angle. And I'll get into the, how I can manipulate those in, in a moment once I show you some other controls. So there's the line. And then also circles, same thing. You can either click on it or hotkey here is C. So I just clicked on it, scroll out. Boom, done. Last thing that is really useful is this fit point spline. Just click on that one. And what this does is this, instead of letting us draw a normal straight line, it actually lets us draw a line with some smooth curves in it. Uh, you can ma manipulate it. I'm just gonna hit escape to get out of this control. Then you can manipulate it and change things by grabbing these bars and moving them around. Um, other things you can do, you can do this with everything. You can grab these little nodes and move things, and you can move this around here. That's gonna be our first thing. And if you want to, you can always grab a circle and snap it to that point so that these two are now tied together. This one's locked in the horizontal position, so that's why it's not letting me move it up and down. But if I drew another line, say at an angle, and I hit okay, escape out of that, it would let me swing it around. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna show you how to dimension things. This can be really useful if you're gonna do something like 3D printing where you need something extremely precise. You can come up here, you can see this sketch dimension or hotkey D. So I'm gonna just hit D. You can see it gives me my symbol and I'm gonna click on this line right here. Click on this line right here. And then I'm gonna pull it out and you can see that it is dimensioned it out. I can either go this horizontal or perpendicular to it click there and then it's gonna either let me just hit enter and select this dimension or I could punch in a dimension so say I wanted this one to be 45 millimeters I'm gonna hit enter and then if you notice it bumped out the edge right there to 45 if for whatever reason I wanted to change that I can just double click on this and type in 20 and then you see it shortened it out so you have a lot of power, a lot of control with dimensions. All right, last thing I'm gonna teach you is a thing for formulas. This is more for some people who've used uh, drafting software before and you want a little bit more flexibility. If you don't wanna deal with this, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna show you that it exists so you know. So if I wanted to use a formula, say for this line right here, let me dimension this out. So I'm gonna just click on that, dimension it out. Just hit enter on that. But say I wanted this line down here to equal what this line is. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over this line and see that it says D2 right there. And I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna click this and I'm just gonna type D2. And then I'm gonna hit enter. And you can see it's this function 80, meaning it's using some sort of math to determine that this is 80 millimeters. Next thing we want to do is let's actually make some shapes that we can use. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to just grab this rectangle, I'm going to pull out a shape, I'm going to hit enter on that. I'm 
want to say finish sketch. Now this is going to bring us back into our 3D mode. You can see our sketch is right here. Let's just show you basic how to make a body. So we're going to come up here to this extrude button. We're going to click on that and let's say I want to extrude this square. So I'm just clicking on it and I can just drag it up and down. And then I can hit OK. It gives me a new body. One weird thing about Fusion 360, and this happens every time, I'm not entirely sure why, as soon as you create a body like this out of a sketch, it turns off and hides your sketch. So you just need to come over here, click this button, click the sketch here, and unhide it so you can see everything else that you're working with. So what if we want to change this body at all? Well, the easiest way I know of is I could just come down to here, this bar down at the very bottom is called your timeline. It keeps track of everything that you've done so far. Hit right click on that, hit edit feature, and then pulls up that same extrude function that I had done earlier. Once we have that, you can see I can determine the distance right here. So I can either type in 30 millimeters, double click on that to open it up, and then it gives me a couple of other options. I can choose where I want it to start from, like have it start from a plane or from some other object that I've made. I can say, hey, I want to go one side, two sides are symmetric. So if I click two sides, it would let me grab this and pull it down. Um, or if I click symmetric, it'll take that same 30 and just do it up and down at the same time. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. Some other options that you have is you have this fillet which kind of just rounds the edges. So I'm just gonna click on an edge and then I'm actually gonna control click and go all the way around. And then I'm just gonna click and drag this and pull it in. And you can see that that's gonna fill it that out. Now in order to move everything around, in order to pan, I'm gonna click down the center mouse button and move that. To zoom, it's just the scroll wheel. To rotate, I'm gonna hold this shift and then I'm gonna click the center mouse button and that's gonna let me rotate around. There's this box up here that shows you your orientation. You can just click this home button, center everything around the origin, and I'll just bring you right back home so you can get your brain wrapped around where you are. Last thing I wanna show you is the chamfer, which does a similar thing to the fillet, except it's at one angle so instead of it rounding the edges like that it just gives you a nice flat bevel edge and one last little trick is I'm gonna actually make another sketch but instead of choosing the origin plane I'm actually gonna choose the face of this box I'm gonna click on that um, I don't want to see this body in the way so I'm just gonna hide that for now I'm gonna draw another circle by hitting C put it right about here and I'm just gonna finish sketch and now you can see I've got another circle right there I'm gonna unhide that body I hit extrude I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna pull this out until I touch this and now it turned red you can see what that did for me is that let me drill a hole through this entire shape it's really nice because I can do that with any shape that I draw can hit okay with that and now we've cut a hole into that that is almost all of the tools that I need to show you I have one last one and that's inserting a sketch so that I can get started so I'm gonna actually start a new project I'm just gonna hit file new design lets me start from scratch and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this insert go down to canvas I'm just gonna click on that and then it lets me pick where I want to pull that file from. So I'm just going to go down to insert from my computer and I'm going to click this isolated glaive file. I'll open that up. Like a sketch, it's going to ask me where I want to put it. I'm going to click on the bottom, hit OK. That is where I want to put it. I'm going to hit OK on that. And this beautiful thing is the glaive I'm going to model. So now I've got this glaive here. I know I want to model this. This is going to be my project. So I want to make sure that I'm able to do things like 3D print this. So I need to set a scale for this for this file. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go into my canvas that I just made. I'm going to hit see this isolated glaive. I'm going to 
right click on it, I'm gonna calibrate it. I'm gonna zoom in, because I know that there's this joining seam right here. I know the whole, this is one solid piece of wood from this point until this point, and I know that this distance, I'm just gonna click right here, and then I'm gonna come over and click right here. And I know that entire distance is 21.25 inches. And I'm just gonna punch in, I can either type in IN for inches, or to do the shorthand quote symbol for inches. Um, in Fusion 360, even though my entire project is set up in millimeters, it will do all the calculations for me so I don't have to deal with things like math. And hit enter, and then you'll see it zoomed in a lot. I'm actually just gonna go hit the home button, pull me out, and you can notice that this thing is way bigger than it used to be. And so now that I have this entire glaive calibrated, that's everything that you need to know in order to make that glaive that I showed you in Fusion 360. That's it. That's all you need. That's all I'm gonna use to model this. Now let's hop into that time lapse and I'll show you the entire process. So, see you on the other side, I suppose. notice I only made half of it. This entire bottom half is flat. I don't want that to be flat. I'm going to turn off my sketches just to make things even. I'm even going to turn off the canvas so you can see what we're actually working with. And I'm just going to go click and drag and select all of that. I can also click and just control click to select everything. I'm going to go to create, mirror. I've got all of my objects selected. Mirror plane. I'm gonna select this bottom base plane that everything's built on top of. I'm gonna click that. Uh, it's gonna give me a ghost of what's gonna happen. And then I'm just gonna hit okay. 
and now it mirrored everything for me. So I've got an entire glaive good and ready to go. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Those are all of the basic commands that I use for Fusion 360. You can see you can make something that's really pretty and actually has some complicated shapes to it without using anything more than just lines, splines, and circles, and nothing other than the extrude button. There is a massive amount of tools that you have available to you, but it doesn't have to be complicated and you don't have to use anything like that. So start simple. You can make cool things with something simple. Everything else just makes, up, makes it what you're doing faster or easier. I'll also leave a link to Fusion 360 in the description so that you can just get there really easy. If you use this to make something, I would love to see it. Feel free to tag myself or Molly on Instagram. We would love to see what you come up with and just chat with you about it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, you can also let me know in the, in the comments down below. Um, if I get enough questions about any specific topics, I probably will do a follow-up video to explain anything else and maybe get into more so some of the more advanced um, things with the program. Um, if not, and you made it this far, I really do appreciate it and thank you for watching and see you next time. I forgot to tell you the save. It's easy. You click the save button, you hit save, you name it. And I hit save. Thanks for watching. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to our buddy Trollcarl who actually designed this glaive. Please check out his stuff on uh, Instagram. 